Hello, hello, Ederson Oliver here. In this video, you're going to be looking at what are all the different places that we can use the Lambda operator as an alternative syntax to simplify your code. So here I have a very simple console based application that has one class called movie with one private field, a lot of properties here, a few methods and two constructors. So we're going to look at all of them and see the different situations that we can use the Lambda operator. Now I have broken down the class movie in different segments here so we can focus on particular aspects of it. If you have a look at the data model, you will see that the status of the movie is a enum and the enum is available on this file called moviestatus.cs and here are the different movie status that I highlighted. Great movie, good, bad, or an invalid rating. So let's go back here to the movie class. The first scenario that I want to highlight is within the fields and properties. If you have a look, there is a property called score that is a read-only property. It is read-only because we only have the getter accessor. We don't have the setter. So this is a very good example of where the Lambda operator can be used. In this case, the alternative to this syntax would be public double score. And I'm going to comment this out here just so that we don't get an error. And then in one single line, we can already use the Lambda operator to return this expression. So by doing this, we are creating a read only property for our class using the Lambda operator. By the way, if the property is read and write, if it has a set as well, you cannot use this syntax here. Next one, let's explore our methods. So let's go to the method segment and we have a method called play. It has only one line of code inside of it. And it's just pretended that you call this method when you want to play the movie. How can we leverage Lambda operator here? Very simple. I'm going to repeat public there and I'm going to comment this out once again, public void play. And now we can use the Lambda operator again with one single line of code. Notice that this method is void, so it doesn't return any value. So this here is just a statement. It doesn't return any value back. So for this one, I'm going to call this the second situation, the second scenario, simple methods with no return type. Next one, and we're going to have a look at the constructors. We have two constructors, one with four parameters, another one, a default constructor without parameters with one single line of code inside, very similar to what we did with the method with one single line. We can repeat this here. So I'm going to comment this out. And here we have public movie, one single line. We can use Lambda expression here, Lambda operator. We can do this. And there we go. This is our third one. Constructors with one line of code. Fourth one, we're going to go back to methods. We're going to jump back and forth here. So going back to methods. Now this method will have a return type. We're going to comment this out and recreate it here. Public boolean is in theaters it returns a value and we return it right away here that's it so this is the case of a method that does return a value very similar to the one that does not fifth one let's look at a property that has getters and setters let's collapse this let's expand the other one so we have this property here called category which has a getter and a setter and we are reading and writing from and to a private field. So in a case like this, the alternative syntax is very simple. I'm going to comment this out. And here's the alternative. So public string category. And then we have the closing and open curly braces. And then the getter becomes just like this category and the setter becomes just like this. This is the simplified version using the Lambda operator for properties with getters and setters. Next one here, we're going to go back to the method. So let's collapse this region, expand methods there. And if you go to choose string, you're going to see that there is this huge switch case statement here. 
it's an alternative way to write a switch statement when you have an enum. So instead of doing all of this, we're going to comment this out. It's testing each enum value and returning a different message. So we're going to replace this by simply saying, because we are just populating status description, so we're going to use status description here, and status description will receive the results of status being compared by using a switch statement with the following syntax. So we open and close curly braces there, and then we're going to specify each of the movie status there. Dot great. For this one, it returns. You must watch and then we list one by one I'm just gonna copy and paste here quickly we're gonna have one for each we're gonna have another one for goods another one here for beds another one for invalid the last one is the default option which we write the default option with this underscore here and by the way at the end we have to put semicolon at the very end here so this is the default and then we just fix the text of each one of them. And the bad one, don't watch. The good one is you should watch. This is a way more simplified version than this huge switch statements. So this is the sixth scenario, switch statements. The seventh and last one that we're gonna check is the one that is present here in the program class. In the program class in the main, what I'm doing here is I'm creating three movies, populating a list with all those three movies, and then I'm creating by using link, and I have imported here, I have uh, used the namespace to use lists, I have used system.collections.generic, and to use link, I'm using system.link. So with that, I'm able to filter this list of movies based on my criteria here. And the criteria that I'm passing to the where method is a method, a function, is greater than 80. Very simple one, it expects a movie, and I check the score of that movie. If it's over 80, I return true or false. Where receives a function, not a variable, but a function that it evaluates each one of those movies and returns a filtered list to this new list here. The alternative is to write this as a lambda expression within the where parameters. I'm going to comment this out and write an alternative here, which would be, I can just say m lambda operator m dot score greater than 80. So instead of having to write a separate function like what we did, we can write it in line using the lambda operator here. On the left hand side, we have the arguments of the function that has been written here. So this is a way to create what it's called an anonymous function. Anonymous function is a function that does not have a name. And this is the seventh way that we have used lambda operators and be able to simplify the syntax of our code. If now you understand better about how to use lambda expressions in the lambda operator and you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and bye.